We have reinforcements in the face of Luke from Haltech. One of the main guys who are going to be sorting this mess out for me. One thing I didn't do, and obviously my knowledge goes as far as it, it goes, really. Um, Haltech has a really amazing feature on the, on, the, on the system. I knew about it. I had a look. But it's just way too complicated for my brain to sort of... Basically what you do, you can enable and or disable or choose whatever sensors, control units or whatever you want to sort of run. And then you assign whatever wires you have available to it. And then you press a little button that is I.O. report and it literally prints you out the full sort of schematics for the whole um, diagram. I kind of missed that step and we started doing it the old fashioned way on the pegboard running the wires, which to my defense, Kind of worked out okay, right? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's pretty it's a, much it's a good starting point. Though. Yeah, pretty much a lot of it. I mean, that's how I did. You start with the really obvious ones they, that are assigned, like ignition, injector, this and that, and then you sort of work your way towards the the more difficult ones. As soon as they got stuck, I had to call for the reinforcement. So that's what Luke is doing right now. He's basically assigning whatever wires we have available left to whatever things that I didn't really know um, existed, really. We're going to be running two PDMs. I was trying to avoid using the second one because of weight and complication, but we very quickly ran out of all the sort of inputs and outputs. Um, is Altec planning to make like a PD32? Um, there's nothing in the pipeline at the moment that I'm yeah. particularly aware of. Um, whether it happens in the future or not, I don't know. So yeah, two PDMs. Um, not a problem. Because obviously they all talk to each other as via CAN. So you can set up up to four PDMs, up to four control panels, and they all talk to each other. And in the software, what you can do, which was quite a surprise to me, literally assign whatever contact, whatever PDM to whatever contact thing. So they all crisscross, whatever. So you can, on one 15 button keypad, you can control either of the PDMs or the ECU outputs or whatnot. So that makes it very, very cool and quite unique, mm -hmm. I guess. Day three. <sighs> well, at this stage, I want to do two things. One is to remind you, there's two ways of achieving this. One way is obviously this. You spend two weeks playing with wires, with a spaghetti, pulling some of your hairs out and trying to figure out where everything goes and, you know, get whatever result you will get. Or option B, which most clever people will actually resort to, is buy one, buy a custom loom pre-made. One of those companies is Fulcrum Motorsport. And I want to give a massive shout out to Tom. He sent me all of the plugs for this loom because I reached out and I was like, Tom, you know me, built not bought, I'm making a loom, I need your help. And he said, listen, I've done all the hard work, I've been doing these looms, for K20s, um, specifically for Clio's. I mean, he does uh, roll cages and stuff like that. So if you want a roll cage for a Clio, or you want one of those K-swap looms, don't be this guy. I mean, you can, obviously, he has all the all the plugs and everything. Um, but yeah, you can just buy one from Fulcrum. Um, so yeah, he sent me all of the plugs, so now I have everything to finish off this loom. Oh, it's not as bad as it looks because actually another part, the PDM part, is already in a car. Me and Eddie have done a wonderful job running all the wires and everything is there. And it's the way we've done it, they're basically two separate looms. So we have all the plugs connecting them together. We have the, some power ones, some of the sensor ones. So those two looms can be separated on the inside. So effectively this one single loom is the engine side of things. And as you can see, look, I'm even trying like proper motorsport wrapping and stuff. It's twisted, not 100% the correct way because I've done it a little bit sort of backwards. Obviously, you need to sort of... Anyways, it's better than like this. You can probably agree with me. Anyway, so this thing will just take the deshiving and I have lots of things to cover the cable with. And I'm even going to use some of this. I think this is... Uh, 
like a braided cover they use for like computer cables and stuff but i thought it would be very fitting because the new library well the new color scheme is black and yellow and I think for the sort of the little legs for the sensors and stuff it would be nice to have uh, as this color. Ah, uh, nearly there, guys, nearly there. All of the sensors that I'm using, I would say 90% are Haltech. I admit that the majority of them are not actually made by Haltech, they are resold by Haltech, but they're most likely made by Bosch. I'm not really sure, it, it's almost irrelevant, but the cool thing is it comes with instructions because if you are a little bit like me, you'd probably end up searching online for instructions and usually they're kind of sporadic and you always get conflicting whatever people do them differently anyways but also it comes with a calibration chart so you literally just put this into your ECU and you know it's going to be 100% you remember how last time when I was calibrating you've seen the video right it took me a couple of hours to do it not with this so right now I'm going to be doing air temperature sensor this is a Deutsch, Deutsch connector, um, really robust, uh, distinctive sort of uh, gray color. Um, so what I need to do is I need to cut it, clean the thing, crimp those on top of that. Then I need to print a little label. Then I put a heat shrink label, clear heat shrink. Then you assemble everything and then you just like that. I mean, it's not a unique way. Many people do that. If you are buying a professional harness from Fulcrum Motorsport, for example. Do we do that show you? Yeah, I got all of the contacts for this loom from Tom at Fulcrum Motorsport. So if you don't fancy making one yourself like I am, he will make you one. Um, so yeah, that's how I do them. And I'm pretty sure other people do them similar way. I mean, certainly putting a label on, um, but I just find it super nice and neat and it's easy to find them and also if i find a link on my amazon i will leave you a link because this one actually takes a heat shrink um thingy bob so you print on a heat shrink it's only small diameter but it's definitely big enough for two three wire sensors so yeah i'm done so water temperature and air temperature out of the way next i think i'm gonna do inlet and exhaust cam sensors so i combine them together in um what shall we call it um a braid black and yellow braid amazon special i thought i'll bring it a bit of color because obviously we have all yellow cage and we're gonna have some black accents so i thought i'll add a little bit of color i'll put some heat shrink just to separate them a little bit more because they're so close together it will be nice to just have them all together on one so now i need to find the sensors and thank you again tom i can't thank you enough he even put them in separate bags for me cam sensors how cool is that thank you tom again fulcrum motorsport don't be like me don't do it yourself just order one false economy um yeah so three pin sensors 
Um, you know what? I need to look at the diagram. I have no idea which one's which. So after literally weeks, I think three weeks overall, because obviously Eddie was here for three weeks, well, three Thursdays. Um, admittedly, it was on and off because I was doing a lot of other things. And theoretically, if I were to start this from start to end, knowing what I know now with regards to where every plug goes, what connectors you need, and if you have everything, I reckon I could possibly, possibly accomplish it in two days if working flat out. So, really, really, you are looking at at least 15, 20 hours of labor. I mean, to do something to this kind of spec. I'm not trying to claim that this is sort of the best, whatever, um, but I have tried my best to make it as neat as possible i mean you can see that every single wire is sort of separated they're all braided twice braided there's um sheathing on the inside which is heat, heat resistant and then you have this sort of uh pretty braid on the top and then obviously every corner every every end is um heat shrunk and then we have labels and everything everything is properly pinned so yeah i can really see why people like fulcrum motorsport or custom productions while well, they actually get it from fulcrum um charge so much for a complete loom because it is labor intensive to get it to this stage you know it's 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 no easy task i mean you, you can obviously buy one of those cheap ebay ones for 80 pounds but it's just never going to work the same way so yeah if you want to be like me do spend a couple of weeks doing it if you don't want to be like me and if you just want one like i mentioned before tom at fulcrum he does all of those looms especially for clear swaps so hit him up if you want a loom um, i'm sure he'll make you a custom one so the next step of the process is to take this beast it's actually not very heavy would you like to know the weight of it oh yes i'm sure you do Two thirty-seven. I have no idea what to compare this to. Maybe somebody will be able to make something out of this information. But complete engine loom is two point three kilograms. Um, I mean, it does have absolutely everything. It obviously has all these plugs for the inside, um, and actually has wires for the lights. I still need to wire those. I'm just not sure. So the lights indicators are on it. Obviously all water pump, fan, uh, oil pump, electronic oil pump. So yeah, let's put this thing in that thing. So the fan is banging. Sounds good, I like that. 
Don't like the fan. It's a soft stuff, man. That's a good lump. What are you all playing with the game?